Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 49 of the Realm Recap. I'm Jason from yakface.com, joined as always by Flyguy from flyguy.net. 49, man. 49. Can you believe that? Yeah. It's wow. like I can go out and buy an expensive car and. I know. <laughs> or midlife crisis. Midlife crisis. Oh, yeah, wow. That's a lot of shows. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. Lots of fun. Um, let's see. This Ooh, week, um, we're going to cover a few things. You know, it was kind of a, a lesser. I don't know. It wasn't, there wasn't a lot going on this week. It get, it's kind of why I like doing these shows on the weekends because something inevitably always happens, like on a Friday or you know Saturday afternoon, and you know you do it late at night, and you pretty much get everything down for the week. But again, this week there were a few announcements from Hasbro, um, both official and non. But we'll start off with the uh, their official announcement that they made regarding the Hero Mashers line. This is a, a line that's been around mainly for Marvel uh, Transformers, but now it is expanding to include Star Wars Rebels figures. Yeah. Uh, what do you What do you think of these? I, I bought a few of them. I, I don't know what your thoughts are. Um, I've not. I've purchased. I've purchased the some of the Marvel ones as gifts. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. I've got a couple nephews that are you know on the runs, you know, five, six years old, or one of them sure. is, at least, and I that's totally in his wheelhouse as far as the stuff he likes to play with. You know, stuff like the you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they have a build a line now. Like I think it's mm-hmm. Mutant Mutants is what it's called. Um again, Marvel Transformers. I think it's cool. Obviously it's geared towards kids. And sure. these are all cross compatible. You know, you know, working Star Wars Rebels for now, into the line, I would assume they'll expand to the regular Star Wars universe. Um, but to have those parts cross-compatible with, you know, Marvel figures and everything, it's just a, a cool way to go about it. And it definitely is. You know, more play uh, opportunities. It is, and you're right. It's definitely a younger audience. Um, these are glam shorts that we, we just shared. They will just share again, if you hadn't seen them, of, of the Rebels figures of Kanan and... Uh, uh, my brain has gone Zeb. blank. Zeb, thank you. Uh, uh, so Kenan and Zeb, and um, the thing is, these are glam shorts, and I don't know if, if you can recall seeing them in hand. They're not quite as well painted as that. Right. Um, yeah, I tend to find. Um, so for a lot of collectors, I think the other thing as well is I see a lot of these in bargain shorts, like five below in the states uh, for five bucks already, and these things are, I don't know, they're only really out as far as in my mind, maybe. Less than six months, four, five, six months. But um, it's good to come into Star Wars. Uh, a few people have kind of had a few digs in a bitch that, that uh, there's more articulation in these than there is in Saga Legends. Right. But uh, as you said, younger audience, interchangeable. It's good that they're doing this. So yeah, um, and you know, there's you know, there's a lot of there's pluses and minus to any toy line. You know, sure. these are what are these ten dollar six inch figures essentially, Mm -hmm. that A, you put together yourself, you know, so there's some labor savings in there as far as from a cost standpoint. (laughs) Uh, You know, it's just a larger, chunkier figure to work with. You know, there's not going to be a lot of accessories because Mm -hmm. the accessories are the parts themselves. So it's, you know, I'm I'm totally for stuff like this. You know, again, I was for stuff like, you know, I, I wasn't for Angry Birds, but I was for the uh, um, what were those dang things called? Why am I blanking on them? The command. No, I know the, both the, the the stupid little figures. Where are they? <laughs> Toy challenge <laughs> time. Yeah. Anyway, okay, we know what those little but, rubber. Yeah. Oh, uh, the fighter pods. Yes. Yes. God, why can I, I collected all those damn things? I get, don't know. I don't remember. That's says a lot right there, probably. They're forgettable. Well, um, I think Lego uh, may be a little, slightly annoyed with this, because, I mean, there's a real builder component there, and, and Hasbro wins a license for these, you know, for these figures, and it's a little too uh, kind of faced in some ways. Lego's not allowed to make many figures on their own unless they're magnets and glued and screwed down, uh, but Hasbro can make these in these scales, so it's probably, I'm sure there's a little bit of rivalry going on there for, for market share, but uh, the Stormtrooper. If they bring a Stormtrooper and Boba Fett out in this, yeah. hell, you know, I think or Yoda, whatever, uh, for you. But uh, I had a couple of these, the Deadpool and a few others, but eh, not great, not great, not for me. 
Yeah, and these figures are very, you know, they look very much like the Jedi Force line that they have. You know, there's like the really larger, cool. you know, I guess they're kind of more like five inch figures that Hasbro mm -hmm. Play School did, whatever it was. But yep, yeah, so. that's right, that's right. Exciting, we're getting a new toy line. Let's hope it sells a little, and we don't get the kind of piles of stuff at the, like command and so forth. But I think with right. the thirst for rebels figures, you're going to see a lot of these in the store. A lot of these sell through quickly, I should say. So right. Fingers crossed. Um, let's see. Speaking of Saga Legends and Rebels and limited articulation type things. Uh, stuff went up for pre-order this week, various um, sites. I know uh, Darkside Toys had put uh, these up. This is uh, Wave 3 of the mm -hmm. Legends Rebels line, which includes, you know, figures that we've all seen before, you know, at various conventions, you know, uh, San Diego Comic-Con, New York Comic-Con. But uh, mm -hmm. it's got some carry-forward figures as well, some decent ones from, yeah, from Rebels. But this, this wave of... Uh, Figures includes the pilot Luke Skywalker, uh, Bespin Han, uh, Lando in Skiffguard disguise, which yep. you can't tell it's Lando because you can't take his helmet off. Uh, <laughs> another another crack at Ezra if you missed it on the other few half dozen times that he's few times, available. yeah, yeah. Available. I mean, who knows? I mean, people don't have it yet still, so that's true. This is true. still good. Um, the Inquisitor and another uh, Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper. So those last two are definitely going to be, uh, they've been really hard for a lot of people to find, I know for sure. Ezra, not, not as hard as you mentioned, but it's not a bad case pack at all. So, yeah, uh, some new figures in there, and I think these are all, what, are these all two per in the in the case? Uh, I think they are. I think it's a complete 12 of singles all the way, so I don't think there's any two, uh, two per the, sorry, there's any extras as such. I think it's right. two of each. So, uh, hmm. So those are up for pre-order now. And then also, um, you had mentioned earlier this week... Um, yeah, I don't think a lot of people know this. Papers. Yeah, it's, uh, a lot of people haven't really talked about it. I haven't seen them really on any other site that I know of offhand. I'm sure they're maybe out there. But, um, yeah, if, if you want an army builder and you want to build a pack, there's four in a pack. I mean, Hasbro did make these. Uh, we have tons of them. Um, there's a lot of people buying them because a lot of people want Stormtroopers. So... 20 bucks a pop. If uh, you're in the U.S., you'll get free shipping, and of course, if you're you're outside Tennessee, then you'll get free sales tax too. So, but um, it is just a, a little last minute thing as well. If you weren't aware, it's probably the news item is will be uh, as a midnight, I guess, is the new black series is also going to be up for uh, sale as of midnight. So the Wave Seven will be available to order if you're looking for a boss, cancel or strong trooper, and the repack and a tie and Jimmy. So cool. Get more figures on the way. Nice. And um, what's the expected arrival date for that? Is that still February? I think so. Late February, early March uh, is what it's right. planned for. But again, these are Hasbro dates. Uh, it's a little bit kind of, you know. It all depends. We'll on see what happens. It all depends. Distribution, docks, and all those kind of things. So uh, right. but, uh, fingers crossed. Cool. Um, earlier tonight, um, th or this afternoon, there were some new figures available or revealed, actually, from uh, our friends at the uh, Jedi Temple Archives. These are, uh, again, uh, Saga Legends-type figures, 5 POA or less. Um, oh, thanks, you. <laughs> figures, uh, in the four new figures that were revealed were uh, Commander Bly um, from Revenge of the Sith, um, which uses a lot of parts, it looks like, from the Captain Rex, except for it has mm. a new helmet and a new pauldron. Um, let's see. There's the Endor Han Solo with his mm -hmm. you know camo jacket. Uh, Looking good. Yep. Uh, Luke in Endor gear, which is very cool yep. as well. It's not bad, yeah. Leia and then poncho. Yep. The Leia and, camo uh, poncho. Yeah. And Asian white outfit uniform. Yep. These were some. Yeah. These were. Some, some of these other mission series packs were on display at uh, New York Comic Con, I believe. Yeah. But so, still, some some higher there? higher res shots of of these figures. But yeah, I've seen some of these before. Yeah. Love that little Yoda. He looks great. Yep, looks very good indeed. So uh, Leia, finally we get a Leia and a good looking Stormtrooper again as well. So some great stuff coming. This is the look we just showed a minute ago. You can get him. Finally, Hannah. God, she's so in demand. She really is. Yeah, I know. 
Just got my flask to have. So, uh, yeah, what's some new images and uh, interesting toys on the wall? Yeah. Um, what do you think of those new figures, those four new ones that we had not seen before? I have to, I, I, after just reviewing, uh, and we'll talk more of this later on, but after reviewing a lot of them, uh, the first 12 this week, um, I'm kinda, it's kind of grown on me slowly. Uh, I mean, I mm-hmm. like them just, uh, again, as display. I am a complete articulation sleazebag and really want to take mm-hmm. figures, but um, I get it. I think I can respect it now a little bit more, and those that like them, like them, that's fine. Um, and they do certainly have a kind of charm around them, but the, the paint works very good. The Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight is a particularly good-looking figure, as is the Boba, as is the Stormtrooper. Um, some don't, don't work too well. That Obi-Wan Saga Legends uh, yeah. clone armor is... Yeah, it's probably one of the weakest I've seen uh, that has been done in a long time. But look, they're going on me. I just if that packaging, Jason, was changed to vintage, I, I just there'd be no argument for me. No yeah. argument at all. So yeah. uh, I'm half tempted to make up some custom. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> Sell them. Yeah. Just to see how it looks, you know. You know, because people are, you know, if if it was on vintage cards, you know, there was a lot of vintage only type collectors that mm-hmm. wouldn't ca- that would collect it just because it's vintage, wouldn't care Absolutely. that the figure isn't articulated because they wouldn't take it off the card. Yep. Um, it's, the, the packaging is not bad, but it just feels a little... No. It's... it's just, they're not trying as hard as they could be, I think. Right. Is. But then we're not, probably not the market. It's not a vintage product that they're sure. trying to go to. So. Sure. It's a, kid, a kid's line. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. Um, let's vintage. see... Talking about vintage, exactly. Um, Jedi Temple Archives released a couple different updates this week regarding their uh, vintage uh, image galleries for their uh, their visual guides, um, adding a bunch of new, you know, carded front and back shots of uh, vintage Return of the Jedi figures that feature, you know, some have the free Emperor offer, some have a bunch of, you know, different other offers and card back styles. So it's very yep. very cool gallery that they're expanding upon. Nice. Definitely. It's a really nice thing to get to see. And you, you, they pay particular attention to the packaging, which is really something I think a lot of us want to see. So uh, it's been very good. Some very good photographs. of. I've never seen Lumat with this Anakin Skywalker kind of flash. There you go. Never seen this stuff. So interesting little gallery. Very cool. Good stuff, Paul. Um, let's see. You had uh, posted this one uh, here in the notes uh, regarding uh, Marco from our friends at the Wolfpack Podcast. Yeah, the ever shy Marco. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't uh, say a lot on these podcasts sometimes, but he's he's a talented guy, very talented artist, and he shared this little tip. Basically, what he's doing. We can't play the audio here because it won't come through the speakers. But what he's basically suggested to, if you open your figures. Um, Marco just suggested cutting off, taking the inside insert and cutting off the back where you've got a picture of the the product there, that one's hand solo is showing. And what he's basically done is just kind of glued it inside that little tray and effectively what you've got is a great display piece. I'll try and make that a little bigger. And um, there you go. And you, you can basically have your figures in a great looking little, I actually thought it was a great looking little display case the way he had it done there. So it's a kind of makeshift thing. And... Um, just a nice little idea. So, cool. and then he just stacks. Nice little tip if you're He just stacks all those. You just put them on a shelf, shelf or a glass cabinet, whatever you've got, and it just, uh, you know, you've almost got a little display card there. Which, uh, again, if if you're a real kind of display fan, a carded fan, uh, Hasbro often one of the ones I can remember from from uh, mm-hmm. memory is DC Collectibles had some great Batman figures that they had. Right. All they had was a card, mm-hmm. but the name was along the top, and just a little base, and it just finished the figures off. So. Sometimes, you know, putting your figures just on a desk is, eh, it's okay, but, you know, they still right. touch, I thought. So. Yeah, that was, you know, I think Hasbro's kind of missing the boat on the display stand thing for stand. this line. I mean, they have them for the figures that you could buy, you know, in packs, or you used to be able to anyway, I'm not sure if you still can, mm-hmm. but, you know, to just to be able to throw that in with these six inch figures, I think that would really have gone a long way to help to help sell this line even further. Well I mean this is I mean from the point of view of even collectors focused things like stands, it's probably not in their kind of strategy. It's low pro- profit margin stuff for them, but even cases for the black series, stands for those black series. I know a lot of people who buy these things and keep them in mint. We have a lot of customers who buy by the case 
and never even open the case. So, right. you know, people want to get these things in mint condition. So uh, it'd be nice to get that from Hasbro. But title, title. Uh, let's see. It's another little thing here. Uh, he shared with you and I this week. Um, if this is the one we're sharing the notes here, Mephisto Archives. Uh huh. The, uh, just to notice, A E1 Comics in the UK, uh, uh, I think actually from right, was born out of uh, Glasgow, my own town, and um, it's a comic store, that, and they've effectively, so I think what this is basically saying is Scotland has its own uh, exclusive Boba Fett, so oh, <laughs> it's a standard version. So it did turn up in the UK, I can't remember where the, uh, or what, what store it was that the Boba Fett prototype turned up there, but this is an officially stickered version which turned up in the, this chain of comic stores, uh, very good comic stores in the UK. And I thought it was a nice little interesting blog that uh, Mifitsu shared with you and I on, on Twitter and, and a lot of other people as well. Yeah. So, uh, did a great little write-up and, yeah, and um, praised some, some handsome chaps on a show called The, the Realm Recap, which is very mm. nice of them. So, uh, yes, we just thought we'd give them a shout out. Nice little blog and blog post, and well written, sir. Thank you for uh, tweeting that to the both. Cool. Um, let's see, that kind of wraps up the Hasbro news for the week. We'll move on to a little bit of Lego stuff here. Um, earlier this week, uh, a image popped up on my Twitter feed revealing, and you, you saw it as well, um, a polybag uh, stormtrooper sergeant from Star Wars Rebels. That's right. Uh, and since then, uh, good friends of, of mine at brickset.com added a little update to that. that they believe it's going to be given away at Lego Disneyland uh, on their uh, meet space, basically, kind of um, May the 4th celebrations. Oh. So if you're lucky enough to be at a... a, a th that's the rumour. Just a rumour, but that, that's what it's supposed to be. Now, that's happened before. I can't remember the exact figure that it was. I think that was the, the blue clone... Uh, Attack of the Clones, blue-coloured yep. uh, clone. Yep. Um, and I believe that then later on came out as, I can't remember where it came out, legoshop.com or something. But, yeah. uh, so we should get to see that at some point in the future. But uh, Another polybag for you and I, I'm afraid. Yeah, got to get that one. Every time. For sure. So, <laughs> but, uh, uh, let's yeah, see. Lots of Lego here. Yeah, uh, this past week was the UK Toy Fair, and um, well, we didn't see a lot of images, you know, official images, there have been Ooh. some that did leak, um, you know, from some sort of, uh, you know, guide or whatever that they might have available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so a couple of them. Given, that, yeah, go ahead. So, I was going to say, this is given to a few preliminary, um, very lucky kind of stores who get this. They always leak these things anyway. Someone always does, mm -hmm. but you always can tell by that confidential stamp over the top of it, but. Um, that's a great looking shuttle tide idea. Did you ever have one of them or did you ever No, I've got, you know, a couple I I don't have a oh, large yeah. one. You know, they had a UCS version. Um I think they had a smaller set as well years back. Yeah, the the UCS one I did have at one point in build. I think we said at one point before on this issue, but you never want to see another white leg or brick in your life. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's just too much white going on in this thing. But it looks a great little set, the, the minifigures there. Uh, indoor, I had somebody mentioned the exact uh, minifigures before, but or I think I posted it as well, but it's a couple of indoor rebel soldiers, um, mm -hmm. Leia and Han, I think it is, in their ponchos and the kind of indoor garb, and Chewie with indoor garb, which is interesting. Hmm. But, uh, then there was what the, uh, the Emperor's Throne Room set from the Death Star. Yeah. Preliminary cover again, but wow, that's a good looking little set there. So, uh, they had a mini version of this, if people would call it, in the Death Star, if you were lucky enough to have one. It was a great little scene in the steps up to the, the Empress chair, which span round, and you had those little control panels. So, this is still very rough, but that would be pretty nice. Uh, yep. And then you pop a team figure there, looking good. We get another, that's the green flash beater. Um, episode one. That's going to be a dud, I think. Depends. Yeah, it's always a dud. It's always a dud when it comes to... to I think the battle droids were just... I think, even if you're not a fan of, of episode one, we're kind of over having battle droids. And they're just... They're not yep. great minifigures. I think the mm -hmm. kid's traction's low. But uh, that's not a bad set in the Bruce Starfighter. But 
yeah. a couple of years ago that we had one of them. Actually, yeah. Actually, two, two and a half years ago. Yeah, and that, what, that only included a couple of, you know, a R2 and an Anakin, maybe? I can't recall. Well, I don't Again, it's Battle Droids. And, yeah. Kind of a, is that Rick Ali? Rick Ali, yeah, and an R2. Slightly different looking R2 in that one, yeah, I think, but uh, we'll see it soon enough. So. so that was the Naughty Leaked Images by someone. Well done, whoever did that, Joan Kidd. So, yeah, and there's some more LEGO news as well. Yes, uh, Jedi News also posted um, <coughs> a link regarding some additional uh, UK uh, reveals. Um, you know, a lot of text descriptions on those sets we just had went over. Yeah. Um, but also the reveal of the Imperial Assault Carrier that's from Rebels, which is the, you know, mm. kind of like the... It's kind of a cross between a Jedi transport and a Imperial uh, Star Destroyer mm -hmm. in design, but then it holds, like, four TIE Fighters underneath the belly of it. That's pretty space. Yep. Yeah, another, another expensive year for LEGO. But, uh, yeah. Imagine Plus, all those course, haven't seen any. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we still haven't seen um, uh, any Force Awakens sets, which has obviously been uh, yep. kept under wraps. I've, I've heard a few rumors. I'm sure you have as well. People have seen some. Yep. So uh, it's going to spell out soon enough. So uh, time will tell. Some tight uh, non-disclosure agreements were yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> written up there. Um Let's see what else. Uh, moving on, not a whole lot for sideshow this week, other than uh, some announcements had gone up. Shipping announcements. I did uh, uh, receive the Captain Rex, and I received a shipping or order processing announcement for R two D two, which is supposed to happen here next week. So Excellent. that'll be fun. Um, so moving on to a little bit of other brands and customs, uh, Anovos this week had a couple announcements where you can now buy individual parts, uh, components for both the TIE Fighter Pilot and the uh, Snow Trooper. Oh. That's right. So, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I mean, we were talking before, but the prices for these, and they are out of reach for a lot of people, but... You know, if you if you just want to start with a helmet or start with a control pack or something, this is a yep. great way to do it. It's a really good way. Just build it up slowly over time. So very smart company, Anovos. They really are. And a great bunch of guys and girls on, on social as well. They're really good at just doing great tweets and keeping in touch with people. So, yeah, I really like them. Yeah. Cool. Um, and, like, for that Snowtrooper helmet, I think that started out, oh, if yeah. you got in on the... the uh, the tier one, which is you know the earliest pre-orders, um, I think that you could. They had two versions available. For one thing, they have a clean version, and then that last uh, icon they have there is the weathered uh, version, which you totally have to go for, I would think. Um, yeah. But yeah, the clean's you, too clean. <laughs> yeah, you'd be able to pick that up for under under two hundred dollars for the helmet itself, if you were able yep. to get in on that tier one pricing, which is you know like around the hundred and eighty nine dollars or something like that. 199. Yeah, but still, it's, it's a great way to start if you wanted. I mean, that's a hot toy. It's a you know, it's a it's a, it's something even. I mean, I've done it myself as I bought helmets before and just get a pole and you display them as you know, a slightly cheaper way of doing it than buying the old master replicas kind of way of doing it. But uh, right. you know, sometimes these things can cost 500 bucks. So think of it that way as a display piece. So uh, yep. yeah, yeah, looks great. Good, fully wearable. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else? Um, again, kind of going back a little bit to the UK Toy Fair news, um, uh, Jedi News had posted an image regarding um, a bag, an exclusive bag that was uh, handed out to. I think it. I think it was Hasbro did this. Um, um, regarding the Force yeah, Awakens, yeah. they, you know, there's some corporate high level. VIP buyer types that were able to see some of the product yeah. firsthand. Obviously, yeah, not well, available. It's only dealt with it, though. Yeah. It's got to be something. And as a parting gift, they got one of these cool little tote bags to take with them to lord over everyone. Yep. Um, and I, I don't know if you noticed this week, if you watched the Rebels Recon for. 
uh, the last episode of Star Wars yep. Rebels, and Pablo Hidalgo had a very cool puffer jacket on with just yep. seven on the sleeve. Damn. Yeah, cool. I saw that. Anything with seven or The Force Awakens. So, yeah, that was cool. Very neat indeed. Uh, let's so see. Um, some custom, excuse me, custom news here. Uh, earlier this week, speaking of Star Wars Rebels, there was... Um, you know, as they update their site weekly after the episode airs, they provide the uh, image gallery for you know the the episode that includes you know kind of a breakdown of this of the episode itself, concept art, and trivia. And within those images, there's there's some cool um, th- not 3D but renderings of the puffer crate for the puffer pig. <laughs> if if people don't know what that is, um, it's kind of ridiculous, but you would know if you've seen the episode. This is the episode with Lando, and he yep. apparently has this puffer pig thing that's that is tied to his mining operation. But uh, I took the the different images and I assembled them into a printable uh, file that you could, you know, download and, and print off on, you know, on paper or have heavier cardstock and then fold it, you know, cut it out, fold it up and tape it together and have a little crate that's in scale with your Star Wars Rebels figures. So, you know, you could have Zeb and Ezra alongside this little crate. Well, you I thought that was kind of fun. Have, you had to have an awesome idea. Well done at doing that. Very creative as usual uh, from you, but uh, you could even just have this as a little diorama piece for any bunch of figures in some way. You know, it's you can have it from different sides or different designs or you know, getting a little yep. Death Star crate for three and three quarter figures. So, uh, really nice touch, Jason. Very good. Yeah, so Very here's you know, like here's a shot of it, you know, printed out pretty decent. And here's a, sh- a little folded, <laughs> assembled one. That's so cool. I think I might do a version 2.0 that deals with the tabs a little bit differently. So, you, because like mine, I had to tape, I, you know, I taped it together to get it to hold its shape. And I have it printed on kind of a heavier stock. But, uh, mm-hmm. It just looks great. I mean, this I want to have things. little tabs that interlock, and you know, you sure, sure, put sure. them in little slits so you don't have to use tape. But uh, our friend uh, Scott from Tulsa, uh, he saw that post, and I'll share my screen here quick. Yeah. He uh, he was home with his kid one day, and uh, his little son put it together. They printed it out, and it was like his first little build project his little, first little custom project, so he, that's a picture of him with, with the printout, and then him with his little thumbs up. Awesome. figures, and <laughs> not bad for a first-timer, is what it's, it's oh, Scott posted, he's a so wide. He's glued it up. Little kid. Very little cool. Little glue kid. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a great looking little, I mean, look at it, you go next to the scale of the figures, it looks fantastic. Yeah. An excellent little thing. This is the kind of thing I would imagine StarWars.com to be doing, a little bit more for younger Kid yeah, like Scott done. there and, and Wyatt. So, uh, well, it's not a Scott's a young kid, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, um, yeah they've done stuff like that in the that. past. Yeah. yeah. But more of that, please, that day. So yeah. That'd be great. Um, see, uh, we had a uh, customizer spotlight this week from customizer My Kind of Scum, and this was just a series of different figures: some Imperials, some droids, some, you know. Basically, some background libraries. filler types. I recognize those libraries there. The, the Star Killer. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's some great looking stuff, as usual. A little bit of Star Killer going recycling on there again. It's good. Yep. Wow, what is that? That's phenomenal. Yeah, that's okay. that's from Star Wars. Um, I think it's in the uh, cantina somewhere. No, I think I think it's a Jabba's. Pa- it might be a concept for a Jabba's palace figure. I I'm totally blanking at the moment, but I know it's in one sure. of the, uh, you know the, the books. I'm trying to think the the Chronicles wow. book, and then kind of like That's the Skittles, old. the Skittles yeah. there. <laughs> That's a great little army there of colors. It's fantastic. And it's, it's cool. They each have like little different features. Like you scroll down, and there's the gray one there, and you can recognize that part on the top of the. Oh, yeah, it's Lego. That's a little Lego bit and red and white one. And my favorite is the, the orange one. That Me too. Me too. He's got like yeah. the little spool of wire or whatever he's got. 
That's beautiful. I like that. And the weathering on that's fantastic too. And you can see like there's recycled Lego bits like on that yellow one next to the orange one. You know, there's that little so piece. Is, little studs. Yep. In that little slatted piece in the front and um I recognize on the orange one, you know, there's those circular parts. Those are like those twist high plastic things that come in action figure. You know, like oh, really? Oh. Yeah, like oh, um, that's what it is. It looks like cable. It looks like uh, well, industrial just, steel cable. <laughs> yeah, there's like the little yeah the little circle, rectangular circle pieces that are glued to the side of the body of him. Mm. Wow. They're part of like the little twist tie packaging pack in things. But a little R2 K2 KT kind of inspired, like maybe? I don't know. Gonk. So uh, very cool. They're excellent. Those are some great stuff. Just so creative but a G.I. Joe going on in there. A little bit of Star Trek too. Oh yeah, I didn't notice that one. Star Trek Alien. Just some heavy weather going on in there. I think that's uh was that Red Hood? Red Hood, yeah. Wow, it's amazing some of the parts when you play around with them and just what they can do. Love the gold droids. They're fantastic. Should be a different page. That's excellent. Some really good stuff again. Hats off to customizers again in your forums. Just good yeah, they, stuff, you they, guys. The tiny they, spend. They do a great job. Um, they do. This one, I don't know if you're able to see because I think you have to log into the Facebook page in order to see it. But uh, yeah. the oh, I saw this custom... I think it's based off of one of the, the five POA uh, twelve inch figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Model That's figure. what I saw as well. Just but, uh, uh, it up here. Just it's a shoot. what's called the Skull Trooper, which is a black version of a Stormtrooper, but it has a skull skeleton deco. Yep. Which I Just thought was pretty cool to me today, and I thought, wow, that's uh, something different. So. Hey, could you imagine if Hasbro released this as a kind of just you know creative artistic video? People would buy this thing. Yeah, if you if you click I one of the images, so, you can uh, see. You know, it's got feet as well. Going under the feet. I just think that's a cool. Yeah. Even if if the the helmet deco made it into some you know expanded universe thing, you know, sure. comic or whatever, it, it seems sure. like a total clone thing. Well, it's it's very similar to some of the Halo designs of the, some of the last games. Halo Reach, the, a lot of the, the uh, troopers had that kind of you know death masks and all sorts of right. stuff up going on. But uh, that's a good way of taking a, a one of the shampoo bottles and turning it into something better. And there was a Boba Fett I saw in the group today as well that was a very similar looking um, design. Someone's taken a, a six inch prototype Fett. And slightly, not in that skull way, but it's certainly got a skull face painted on it as well. So, I think huh. it's beautifully done. In fact, it was the same person, if I remember. They were only looking at the one post here, but uh, there we go. It is there. And that's what they did as well with the, um, uh, I guess, one of the clones have turned it into Commander Bly. That's cool. Isn't it? Yeah, Jushep Sardou on the Six Inch Black Series uh, group. Yeah, did a great job of that. And here's the FET uh, images. We'll just try and share with you here on the round recap if you're watching us. Oh, Which that's cool. Uh, isn't it? So a prototype FET, or, or not a prototype FET, actually, whatever it may be, but they've painted it white with a, quite a nice... Again, that's really about Halo. I can't remember the character in Halo, but that very kind of ripped mask. So, yeah, they're a great, he's a great customizer. Yeah, that's a one cool. other one that he's posted in there. A kind of red. And this was one of those Entertainment Earth, uh Mandalo. I think it was in it, one of the packs. Oh, I yeah. Can't, maybe I'm just making that up. I can't remember. It was very similar to that Mandalorian anyway. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, there was about yeah, a dozen of them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Justin Mareel and all these guys. So, yeah, very talented uh, Jew chef. Uh, oh, some, there's some Darth Maul, too, while we're here. Some little, whoa, there you go. Shirtless Dar so, Darth Maul. Uh, shirtless Darth Maul. Hmm. Very cool. That's a nice little variant Hasbro could do. Since Darth Maul is uh, going for crazy prices online at the moment, it seems. Yep. Six inches. So. Uh, let's see. Next cool. one was a uh, set of custom 
uh, prints that you had uh, discovered. Yeah. I think Tom this Tom, popped Tom's up. Tomsey1789. Yeah, he sent it to you and I, I think, as well. So yeah. uh, it's definitely or definitely at some point. Um, popped up on my Tumblr he's just, page. He makes them. Oh, did it? Okay. So uh, I saw this on Twitter and he just, uh, I think he pinged you and I or something at some point through the weekend. Well, I, I was looking at it, but I finally got a chance to look at it, and I really like this. I'm, I'm really, really tempted to buy one. And the shipping's only, I think it's like 10 bucks to the to the US. But he's got some great looking prints here. Uh, there's some that he's got. He's basically got three prints uh, sitting across. And if you want a, a, an instant living room kind of Star Wars um, piece, we're just waiting for this to load. There you go. There's your sofa. And above you, you get three cool looking little designs for. Um, has worked there. I'm very tempted by the Boba Fett one, which I think can be purchased. But yeah. It's only 15 bucks here, and again, 10 bucks to ship or something like that. It's very low cost. What are the and sizes of these? This is pretty big, I think. Uh, if I remember right, let me just scroll down to the size, which you mentioned is the uh, E3. Hmm. It's pretty big. E3, E3. Well, that's a reasonable size, I guess. So it's um, spray painted. Uh, I guess there's some kind of I don't know the process that he does and goes through. He mentions in, in detail there on premium silk paper. Yeah, uh, A3 is A3 is about t- you know twelve by seventeen. Yep, it's an average poster size, I guess, or small poster size. But um, I just thought it looked great, very original, very different. I've never seen yeah. that, that before. And I just like the consistent styling. I think like a lot of people. Um, there seems to be a lot of stuff that probably you see as well as I do on Tumblr. That there's a lot of people often take a, 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 their take on maybe a New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, and in the same style uh, anyway to try and keep a set, which is nice. So yeah, yeah so good like work, Tom. Like that minimalistic style posters that I, like the Mondo I stuff. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, that was particularly cool and pretty low cost. Uh, let's see, finally, for the custom bits this week, uh, I saw this article. It was cop- popped up through you know Google notifications that there's a guy out there that made a custom printed, you know, a 3D ATDP helmet for his son. Oh, that okay. was pretty, pretty crazy. Let me just see that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. My apologies. I'm, I'm behind in my clicking of links. Let's have a look at that. So... Uh... ATDP helmet, a custom one. Okay, this is good. Let's have a little look. And this is his dad that made it. Fantastic. So, 3D printed. Wow. Just coming up. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Okay. Now, if only 3D printers were very cheap. <laughs> right. And he printed well, this in, you know, multiple pieces to assemble it. I think he said it's in three. It took about 100 hours to, to do it. And he details wow. on the process and, you know, making sure that, you know, he, you know, sanded it and, you know, covered it in, you know, like a Bondo type of material, sanded it again, sure. painted it. It's very cool. Took some cheap uh, sunglasses to cut up and use for the lenses for the visor. That's awesome. very ingenious. It is. One-off. Because his son wanted to go as a DP or ATDP yep. driver. Oh. It just shows you the quality of work that people do. It's often better than the toy manufacturers. Oh, I know. So, uh, wow, 3D printing is definitely coming up. Uh, I guess these printers are just going to come down and down and down in price. So. You would think. Well, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, even things like General Giant recently, as we were talking a few shows ago with the launch of their website, their, their updated website, it's principally a lot of it's around uh, downloadable 3D designs. And so mm-hmm. It'll just be, a matter of, just be a matter of time before, you know, companies are offering, you know, 3D yeah. files that you could download, you know, purchase, sure. download, and then print yourself, and then, you know, do whatever, you know, it's just, it seems like that's the way of the future in some definitely some ways. Definitely. Um, let's see, moving on to TV, movie, book, and game news. Um, some various Marvel bits here and there. Um, you had shared a few uh, different uh, covers for the Vader 
uh, the Vader series that's coming out? Did uh, his legs not working? Let's see. get it back up again. Yeah, this was um, oh there we go. The Boba Fett fan club, good friend of uh, both of us, I think he's been yep. often uh, online. But uh, a couple of different covers coming up here for uh, Darth Vader number one. So we've obviously seen all these hundreds of this multitude of uh, figures, but they're very nice holiday special. Um, I love that. Isn't it cool? Isn't it really cool? So Boba on his whatever that animal was, but uh, riding his ocean with these weird kind of prong. He's tuning fork, and uh, yeah, it's very cool. So Boba Fett will be in the uh, Darth Vader number one comic, we're told. So hence why he's plastered all over. So there's another nice little picture there as well. They're all uh, no blemishes or sight marks on them, which is always nice. Uh, so you get to see the covers. And that's uh, for those that have read Star Wars uh, Marvel number one. You get a little sneak peek of Jabba's palace, and well, we're getting a little bit more, so... Not only Vader this time, but there's Fett from the back as well. So, yeah, cool. so uh, it's a whole other a bunch of comics to collect. But uh, so this yeah, one I wonder how many covers one. this will have. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. So, and talking of uh, comics, uh, we did see last week on uh, here in the World Recap that um, courtesy of Dark City Toys, uh, we were going to give away a couple of these. Uh, comic book covers to uh, some people who follow Dropsy Toys on Instagram, and uh, we've got a couple of winners here. So if you uh, are a follower of Dropsy Toys on Instagram, we will be in touch. And those uh, people are we could have flashed down on the screen, wouldn't it? There we go. The winners are going to be um, just get the names of the people there. Imperial uh, Nits. Imperial Nits. Yep, Imperial Nits. That's a nits. Not, not as Nits in your hair, but uh, as a knitting. Um, who uh, is a great follower. I think he, he's a lot of uh, uh, cosplay, I don't know, voice kind of materials he posts as well. So, very nice chappy. He's winning a copy. And also the Grey Cleric, uh, who's another person who follows there too. So, uh, very yeah. cool. Yep. They've been added to my Instagram list. Yeah. The good stuff. They're very nice people as well. They've been chatting all through the week as well, so you both get a copy. Uh, we'll be in touch, and we'll get you a Star Wars Marvel variant uh, number one in the mail to you. Cool. Uh, next one you would share was uh, regarding the Comlink uh, yeah. video podcast series YouTube channel deal. That's right. That's right. Much like it's, we do um, here. Much like we do here. So uh, <laughs> thanks for copying this comment. We cannot. No. The, um, <laughs> Wish. These guys, um, uh, very talented a bunch, James Arnold Taylor and uh, David Collins, who you'll probably know as the voice of Han Solo from, he's actually done Han Solo in a couple of games, um, but uh, he, and then for some reason they launched this show, The Comlink, on, um, I can't remember his name. Kevin Smith. Thank you, Kevin, I'm oh, forget for the, Kevin Smith's uh, channel a while back. Which I thought was a weird move, um, but they've now since well, they've now since changed everything and starting again over on their very own YouTube channel. Um, I just I haven't had a chance to watch the Comlink yet. Um, you know, both just and I are on a lot of podcasts and life and other podcasts and things are going to do. You often don't get time to watch these things, but uh, they do a very very slick video. If you haven't seen it, very worth watching and having a look. We're just sharing that on screen again. We can't play audio; it won't pick up. But uh, David Collins runs around uh, in this location, uh, and uh, it's nothing but full of uh, very slick presentation the way they've done it. Stormtroopers and R2 and Darth appears in there, and just a pile of extras and uh, lots of other little uh, tippets and, and nicely done. It's just a very slick trailer for the show. Um, so look, again, I haven't really watched it. I'm sure it'll be great with those guys. Uh, Rebel Force Radio, I'm sure, is involved in some way. The guys, Jimmy and those guys, are involved maybe with audio, I'm sure, at some point, because they're all good friends. So yeah, definitely check it out. But very slick trailer, guys, and uh, very nicely done. So, uh, uh, and of course, we'll come on your show anytime. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there we go. Uh, let's see. Next up was Star Wars Celebration news. Um, they're... I think things are going to start rapidly progressing here uh, in regards to celebration announcements now that we're kind of, you know, only a couple months away. Um, but they did announce that they are going to be screening the Navajo uh, Indian uh, version of A New Hope, 
which is something mm-hmm. it was the I think that was the first Star Wars was the first movie to ever be um, yep. translated into Navajo mm. Indian. It's going to be very interesting to watch. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know anybody who speaks Navajo personally, but uh, uh, it's I guess it's a curiosity factor for a lot of people. But uh, yeah, I think it's had you know some limited you know, screenings, you know, prior to this one. Um, but they're going to officially have it available to to watch at Celebration. So I thought that was kind of a neat announcement yeah, by them. Yeah, uh, it is very, very unusual left to center. And I, I guess, I mean, that, that holds well for um, other curiosities and things that come out of Lucasfilm in the future. So it'd be nice to see some other things as well that they, they dig out and can show us. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of unusual. Yes, we have. Uh, uh, um, Gog. This website, uh, (laughs) Gog.com, has posted um, several old-school games that a lot of us kind of grew up on in the, I guess, 90s, you know, late, mid-2000s. Games like X-Wing and Rebellion, X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, a lot of those games, they've made those available online. Which is pretty cool. There's, I think there's like sixty-four Rogue Squadron 3D. Yeah, it's like nine or ten different different Lucasfilm games. Rogue Squadron, which yeah. was a big like yeah Nintendo 64, I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I think these are only. Yeah, I've never had a go up before. Yeah. I think these are only, available, only available to play to on Windows, judging by the icon in the lower left. Uh... Um, if you were to go to the GOG uh, front page. Okay, let's just go back. A lot of games there for sure. Uh, oh, see, you don't... Because you're, you're on a PC. So the yes. iPad doesn't show up for you. So it's just... For you, because you're on a Mac, it'll show up. Show the Windows yeah. icon. That's fine. Saying it's only available. Okay. So, yep, Windows, XP, Vista, 7, and 8. Yeah, just all the crap platforms. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> GOG I've never heard of before. Um, I don't know, actually. I, I would have thought these would have been on Steam or something, but... Uh, yeah. Pretty unusual. Pretty cool. Uh, you know, games like Rebellion and uh, Dark Forces, you know, these are classic, yeah. you know, 90s games that I totally remember... totally remember playing. Yeah, uh, Nathan of the Republic... TIE Fighter was a huge one for a lot of people. Yeah. Those flight simulation so, games. Is that right? Galactic Background Saga, I believe, uh, and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I think that was only previously on the PSP. Right. Um, yeah. I think that, that even made that out to um, uh, PCs at all. Maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. I think I'm probably am wrong. Never mind. Anyway, Again, that, lots of cool I, games if you want to spend your money there. Yeah, that game dates back to 2001, so 14 years old. But again, you know, these are these were popular and fun. There's still a pile of other games they haven't released. Yoda Stories was one I always remember, a little PC game from a long time ago. Great little 8 bit looking little thing. Yep. But, uh, of course, there's always some other ones would be great as well. Would be, but I guess the Lucas film, Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, mm-hmm. Super Hard, Return of the Jedi. All those games would be great to get. So, very cool. Uh, let's see a uh, little bit of Star Wars Rebels news this week. Um, there wasn't a new episode, but if you happen to be on, I'm not sure what cable providers actually had it available, but mine did. Fortunately, um, Comcast slash Xfinity, whatever people call <laughs> it anymore. Um, has the episode that's going to air in February available to watch now on demand for free. Um, so I was able to catch wow. that. Um, it's called Visions of Hope. And it features... Um, yeah, there's the... Uh, the description for the episode is the crew of the Ghost try to thwart an Imperial plan to capture an exiled dignitary who wants to host a secret rally on Lothal. So. You hint a little bit that there was some tiny spoilers in here, or maybe they're bigger spoilers. Yeah, I I won't say now. 
what it is. Okay. I mean, it's there's a character that's in it that is not who he seems to be. Okay. I'll just say that. Interesting. Okay. Kind of, it was kind of a neat twist. I kind of I, like I posted on Twitter the other day. I kind of wish I would have held off on watching it and watched it live with everyone else that live tweets the episode on Mondays because it would have been a fun, you know, whole exchange there. I'll still probably do it because I think people are going to be surprised at the result of what of what transpires in that episode. But still, I kind of wish I would have waited to have the have that little bit of surprise with everyone else. So. It's still it's well, an decent episode. You know, we're coming off of two two or three really good ones, you know, like with the Jedi training ones with Kanan and Ezra. And then last week's was the Lando episode, which was fun, yet, mm-hmm. you know this one I would say is kind of on par with, you know, the average type of episode of Rebels, but again it has this twist in it that makes it just a little bit better, just because there's, you know, this is obviously the thing that happens here is character development, which I think, you know, some people kind of not necessarily take for granted, but you kind of want to see stuff happen and you want to see the plot move along for the series and what happens, Mm -hmm. you know, because people want to know who, you know, Fulcrum is, which is a key person of the series so far that we don't know who the, who it is. I suspect we'll find out before the first season is over, but yeah. you know stuff like that. Cool. And then the last bit of uh, game news this week was this uh, trailer that you had posted for the Force Awakens, but is unique in that it is in eight bit. Yes. Well, well, I guess yeah, I guess it is. It, it, it's um, there was a sixteen bit trailer this week earlier on for Guardians of the Galaxy, which was an absolute belter. Uh, but this is a little different here. Um, uh, Marie Helm uh, or Maru Helm uh, created this cool little The Force Awakens in eight bit. Uh, we'll just make that screen a little bigger, and hopefully you can see it there. But uh, that is obviously audio here again, but we get John Boyega <laughs> jumping up there, um, and it's got the full you know Andy Circus. Have you felt it? And then there's BB-8. Uh, so it's the complete Force Awakens trailer. The Stormtroopers don't work too well just because of the kind of pixely nature. But uh, that's a beautiful looking little uh, HP Lily speeder thing that she's on. And uh, Poe there in his X-Wing. Cool. It's just nicely done. It's a nice little touch. And it, I mean, again, I just I, I love showing this stuff because it's fans. There's a saber, of course, the controversial saber. The fans spend so long doing this thing. I mean, this is a good, I'm guesstimating there, but it's at least 10 hours work to draw this thing, then render it all, and then put it into Flash, and then pull the thing together with the audio. So yeah. I just love fans, just the dedication and customizers and people like this do. So 8 bit is tough. 8 bit is tough to work it in. Is, I mean, it's it's rough as far as, you know, from I used to design yeah. um, icons in 8 bit. Um, for various people and whatnot, but I and I love doing that. You know, you're working in a, you know, such a small uh, yeah, environment cool. for one thing, and then you, you only have so many pixels to work with, which makes it all that more challenging. And trying to convey shapes and color, and you know, you've got like four colors, not four, but you know, 256 colors to work with. It's just. And then you've got to animate the damn thing. It's yeah, it, it animating sure it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, that so, Falcon I mean, scene was kind of impressive there with all the stuff going on. But so, yes, hats off to you, people who are just uber talented. But um... uh, that brings us to yeah. the reviews of the week. I had none because I'm lazy. Um, I no, you had a bunch of of stuff you had posted over on FlyGuy.net. Yep. Just a pile of fuff stuff, really catching up and some stuff and getting through this horrific uh, pile of shame that I have of, of stacking up that Jason knows all too well about. But, um, uh, yes, get the next chance this week. If you haven't, uh, if you're not a follower of my reviews on YouTube, I, I finally posted up for everyone else on to this little thing. We talked about this before, but this little poncho here, this Mandalorian uh, little poncho uh, that uh, you can buy, and I just talked through that, just the kind of... Uh, colors and options you can get. Cool little piece. I did like it. Um, 
some other ones, just of note, not really Star Wars, but a great figure if you can get hold of it. There's only a few left out, out there, but the uh, Marvel Select Venom is a killer figure. I really wish we could get some Star Wars figures like this. 16 points of articulation, four interchangeable heads, and about three separate sets of hands. and It's just a crazy figure, so um, a really, really good one. And the other ones, they were just some of the Rebels ones just catching up on uh, Chopper. Kanan Jarrus and that, oh yeah, that awful Obi Wan Saga Legends, which is just it's not not the finest moment for both Hasbro and Five Poe, uh, sadly. But um, nope. Chopper's a belter of a figure, uh, as is Kanan, so uh, definitely really good figures. So yeah, you can check them out. Uh, let's see new toy acquisitions and purchases this week. Uh, why don't you start off this week? You had a decent amount yeah. there. Just a pile of shame over here, but this one was one I bought for a friend's birthday. This is the Star Wars Ultimate Guide to Vintage Figures. Now, we've got a lot of books. Uh, you know, I've talked about lots of uh, Star Wars books, and we've shown them in different other shows. BCA, we, we've talked about them with Dan and Paul contributed with Steve Sansweet. But this one's slightly different, just purely on vintage. It does have uh, really beautiful full-color photographs. We'll give this a little review over the coming weeks. It is a little short on the carded images of figures, but you do get a few in there, but it's the content, it's the actual written content in here that really gets into all the detail of all the variations of, I did not know there was three versions of the uh, Rebel Commando down there, mm -hmm. but uh, there is. So all the different variations, and, uh, yeah, it, it's just bewildering, and there's still stuff, we were talking about this before, um, you can still find variations and versions of figures you never knew existed, so a beautiful book, and I, I saw this for a friend, I thought I'm just going to buy a copy too. Uh, not that expensive. I'm sure it was well under 30 bucks. Um, yeah, 27 18 days of retail. I think it's maybe a little bit cheaper on uh, Amazon. But uh, it's a great looking book. And yeah, I thought it was really worth uh, picking up. If you're a vintage nerd, it's uh, a little blast from the past. Vehicles are included as well. Stuff I've never seen before. So just, you know, by nature, it was a very limited release. Um, but uh, beautiful pictures and just tons of text. So a nice uh, toy porn uh, reading from uh, that. Who is the, who's the author of that one? The authors are, in fact, he was actually, I believe he was on uh, Coffee with Kenobi this week. I'm sure I saw the name out there, but it's Mark Bellomo. Okay. Uh, I'm probably killing your pronunciation of your name, Mark, if you're, uh, if you're there. Mark Bellomo, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure. But Sounds familiar. Also, oh, yeah, it does, actually. The guys at the Vintage or the Chive cast, I'm sure we're buying a lot of this as well. So it's kind of been doing the rounds recently. There's a few... Reviews and some vintage uh, groups and forums that was on, and I started to see it uh, kind of bubbling up. So it's out there if you want to get it. And uh, the other one this week was the gorgeous, uh, absolutely gorgeous Wolfpack clone, which I will give a review this week. He's just a beautiful. Looking uh, he's awesome. I love that nice. design. It's my favorite. It's so nice, isn't it? So really nice little shoulder emblem. The guns just seem to be getting bigger, but it's a beautiful. Beautiful job again with Sideshow. Sure. Lots of little extras this time that they're giving us. And the, the kind of a little collectible stand there, which you won't tilt too far, the world pack stand. So that's a beaut. Um, Marvel Select Venom we talked about. And the other one was just a big shout out to my friend Cody on the world pack who dug out and sent me, I think you got one of these as well at one point, you bought one, but the vintage cover of yep. the uh, Marvel Star Wars number one, which thanks to you, I'm now collecting them all. So... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, gotcha. so thank you very much to Corey. Uh, you, I, think you probably, for... I think you probably <laughs> got me into Lego. Oh, well, there you go. There you was go. Before, so, but... so, yeah, kind of haul for me this week. It's quite a lot. So, yeah. uh, let's see. For me, it was kind of slow. Nothing really happened. You know, I received a lot of stuff that I had ordered last week. Um, I received the uh, Marvel number one from you, which was great. Cool. From Dark, uh, Dorkside Toys. Um, I received my Think Geek version of the cover, which is features Han and Chewie. Yeah, Let's cool. get out of the light here. And, it. and then uh, my Loot Crate version came. I like that. It's nice. Which is pretty sweet. Um, let's see. I, the comic itself is great. I think <laughs> it's very... It's it just, again, it feels so Star Wars from... Even you know the dialogue is very mm -hmm. Star Wars like, and I, just the overall story is pretty fun. Um, what else did I buy this week? I picked up a clearance. Uh, the oh, nice microfader. 
microfighter from Walmart for five bucks. Wow, you never see Lego reduced. Yeah, it's, like, it's Walmart. They do weird stuff sometimes. Mm-hmm. I was surprised on the build for it was. I like the just the process of what yeah. it went to develop the the star destroyer in this scale, especially like the tower at the top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just like the, the whole ones, yeah. the whole build there. Get a nice chunky feel to that one. It's very yep. kind of solid, stable. Mm. Um, what else? And then I, like I mentioned earlier, I received the Captain Rex. Uh, from Sideshow, which I had sent that out to uh, someone. And then various other non-Star Wars Lego bits. Um, I'm hooked on these damn polybag blind figures. <laughs> I, I'm i bag feeling <laughs> now, which I did with The Simpsons, and I haven't done it with anything else, but I you know, picked up, I don't know what this, this kind of looks like Ming, from it does, doesn't it? It really from, is. Uh, Flash Gordon. Yep. Uh, I got like the ogre girl. Yep, he's cool. Uh, the fence. The fence. The fencer. I have a ton of these, by the way. If you're looking for particular ones, let me know. I, I do. I, so I, I I'll ones. send you a list because. Awesome. I'm getting down there as far as my chances are bad at getting the ones I want. Um, the alien guy. He's cool. I've never seen him before. Who else? I, I think I shared my other ones last week. The hot dog guy. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Anyway, that's non-Star Wars stuff. You have the minifigure sickness. It's, I know. Uh, God. And what am I going to do with them? I, I have, to be honest, I have them on my desk at work. That's I don't have them here because I don't have room here. <laughs> I think you have a complete set of every single one of them since they brought them out, and it's just tons. I know. I'll put them in a little plastic toolbox, and there's a yeah. lot of them. Ever since oh. the Lego Movie came out, um, because you know all those figures, they they don't match or anything. You know, it's not sure. like it's Star Wars, and these are all Star Wars characters. It's Batman. It's you know, just a ton, a cop. It's you know, construction worker, whatever. So now, throwing all of these in with my Lego Movie stuff that I've been picking up, just totally goes together. It's I don't have to sort things, but anyway. And then I put together that little uh, Rebels transport. Oh, I I love this thing. <laughs> I don't know why. I just like all the little stormtroopers. I like the little turret that goes right at the yeah. top. It's just a nice, cool little micro feel about it, but I love a bigger one. Really yeah, one big. that's about three times as big. Yeah. <laughs> In scale, that'd be great. I'm sure someone's already done it, but... Uh... That was it for me. I was, cool. it was pretty light. Well, just another little tidbit as well. There, one of our uh, listeners, we've mentioned him in the four before uh, show on the show before. Get teeth in here. Uh, Colin Tours, who's a firefighter in uh, we up in the Aberdeen kind of region of uh, Scotland, who uh, we mentioned before. He burns the show to a CD and listens on the way there. Uh, let me know another little note this week. Um, he had quite a big nasty shift when he was uh, doing his work, and there was a large fire in a fish factory. Uh, he mentions if you really want to see it, you can Google Peterhead Fire, which is up in Aberdeenshire. Um, so they were out all night, and they drove home, and they were all a little ropey, and uh, they nearly dozed off a couple of times. Uh, you'd think they would if they were listening to us, but they nearly <laughs> dozed off a couple of times. And he says episodes 46 and 47 kept him awake. So you can wow. now add wood safety to your list of uh, Realm Recaps credits. So there you go. Not only are we bringing you awesome toy news, we're keeping you safe on the road. <laughs> Buckle up, everybody. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Interesting little tip. Thank you, Colin. That's cool. I think that's it for this week. Um, again, we'll uh, like to thank everyone for watching this week's show and our press shows and commenting. And uh, congratulations again to uh, those that commented to get their uh, Marvel's number Marvel number one, uh, Imperial Knits, and the Gray Cleric. Um, we will be back. Uh, Next week with a decent show, I think. Um, I, you know, it's we're leading up to the couple weeks before Toy Fair, and mm. there's always stuff that kind of trickles out prior. So, I think we'll get you know one or two decent reveals before them, whether it's actually by Hasbro or unofficially. But uh, next week's show, look forward to doing that. So, until okay. then, we'll see you next week. Adios.